This is sort of a quick shot of my existing galley countertop. It's laminate, as you can see. It has several openings in it for pot storage and the ice box. It's stained. Chunks taken out of it. Really needs to be repaired or replaced or have something done with it. So what I decided to do is I'm going to use an epoxy countertop which I purchased through Stone Coat Countertops. I am not sponsored by them in any way. This is something I just decided to do on my own and I'm going to share this job with you today. Step one was to remove the trim pieces and the plumbing fixtures. I left the sink in. Next I cleaned the surface with a standard TSP solution. With the surface clean, next I started disassembling. The first thing I removed was the propane stove. With the stove out of the way, it was easier to remove the lid to the pot storage area and also the lid going to the ice box. Disassembly completed. Next I sanded the countertop smooth. I used 220 grit and a palm sander. Now for countertop repair and filling in the divots and, and damage, I simply used Bondo. I mixed the Bondo right on the countertop. Here you can see that I have the Bondo spread all around, using it to fill in the cracks, crevices, and imperfections in the countertop. With the sanding complete, for good measure, I cleaned it one more time with TSP and Windex. We'd like to take a break here at the channel from all the action and ask you if you enjoy what you see here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscription button. We'd really appreciate it. Also, give us a thumbs up. The positive feedback is always enjoyed. As you see here, the countertop is all sanded. With that job completed and the cleanup done, it's time to start the taping. On the lids, I taped all of the edges and over the openings for the existing hardware, as you see here on the ice box lid. As I mentioned earlier, I decided to leave the sink in. So what I did was I taped around the edge of the sinks, just a little bit off the countertop height, about an eighth of an inch, and then put 30 mil poly over the top of it, which you see here. Now the openings for the existing sink hardware, I just plugged them up here, and as you see in the back. Next, I used that same 30 mil poly to close up the openings from the ice box and the pot storage. I also used it as a protective layer over the cabinetry and any area where the clear coat epoxy would flow off the top of the counter and I also protected the floor. With that done I decided to also protect the back side of the fiddles on the countertop there so that I could keep them a uh, nice wood finish. So what you see here is the finished protection ready to go. Stone Coat Countertop recommends that the first step is to apply their bonding primer, which you see here. So that's exactly what I did. The bonding primer is applied using a regular paint roller. I used a small one since I've got a very small surface area. And their famous saying is, thin to win. So put it up, use just enough to cover the countertop, like you see here. After applying the bonding coat, they recommend that it dry, so here I'm going to say go ahead and have a cold one. After your Bondo dries for this particular type of countertop that I'm trying to replicate, which is a white marble with a black graining, you want to apply your base coat. Now I went to Big Blue and got a standard white paint and primer together in one, which you see here. Since I didn't have a large area, I just picked up two small sample sizes.
With the first coat dry, I went ahead and applied a second coat. Stone Coat Countertops says you only have to put one coat, but my particular situation, I don't know why, but it was necessary for two. Now, in order to get the veining, I used a product called Montana Marble. It comes in a spray can. You essentially just hold it up in the air and spray over your countertops in the direction you want the veinings to go. With the openings placed back in, I used a Montana Marble to spray the veining. Here you see what it looks like. After letting that dry for about an hour, I then mixed equal parts of A and B of the Stone Coat countertop product together. Make sure that you pour B in first and then A and mix well. I mix for about four to five minutes using a blade and a drill. After you've mixed the product up, you then pour it out on your surface. Spread it out using a notch trowel that you can get from their website. You want to have it drain over the edges so that you get everything covered. After you've done that, then you take one of their what they call chop brushes, which is essentially a stiff paintbrush, and go around and dab it all over. That gets the air bubbles out. I didn't get any pictures of those two processes because my hands were all sticky, but I think you can figure that out. The next step, you take the torch and slowly go over the whole surface to get the last of the air bubbles out. Don't let it linger too long, and you want to do this twice. Recommend waiting about 15 minutes in between each go over with, with the torch. After waiting about four hours, I removed all the tape from around the sink, the opening, and the edges. This allowed me then to scrape those opening edges off and let it set up. Here you can see the area underneath the stove. I just used all the extra product I had and decided to do that so that it would match the countertops. After removing all that tape, I let everything set up for over a week since I only work on the boat on the weekends. So here you can see the icebox opening with all the new hardware on it. And finally, one quick shot of everything with it all put back together and the trim pieces in place. Well, that's a wrap for this week. As always, thanks for stopping in. We appreciate your viewing. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. And remember to hit that subscription button. Peace and fair winds.